Do I think that's going to work? No. Hello, everybody. Drew here. Tip of the mitt flips. Got nine orders going out today. Um, just had to make a quick run. Pick the boy up from school. He's not feeling too well. So that, you know, wasn't really expected in my day. Never like to see a kid sick. Uh, first thing we're pulling today is funny though this my boy this this is him to a t and, oh my stomach oh oh and then when the teachers opens the door with like they'd packed up his lunch for the day to take home with him i guess or whatever and he sprinted across the field to go get it and then as soon as he's back in the car oh my tummy he is definitely he's a he's a monster he eats more than me like hands down eats more than me he's six years old uh first thing up in the old system, vintage corningware, cornflower blue. Um, let's see what we're at. There we go. Pretty sure this is the right one. Cornflower blue. I'll double check though. P81B. No, that is not right. I need a P83B. So that one goes back. And da, 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 da. where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? Oh, right down here. There's a stack of them. Uh, P83B. Same thing, just a little different style. It's a flatter, skinnier one. I got four of them, so let me double check if that was a multi-quantity listing or what we got going on there yep multi-quantity listing perfect next up gremlins NECA figure <sighs> little dust on top that's always fun Ugh. all right that's outside of the box i'll show you what it looks like cool thing i picked up retail arbitrage um the swim trunks uh gremlin NECA figure i actually i put that on sale retail arbitrage stuff i usually don't put on sale i just wait until the quantity of one's for sale goes down a little bit i i don't know i just i i really want i need to start moving some things i know that's you know what you're supposed to do every single day is sell the things on your shelves but i i I could be completely wrong, but I predict there being a lot of quantity I get to buy this summer. So I'm 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 not trying to hold on to things for every single dollar. So I put it on sale. Um, I think I paid thirty five for it. So I'm you know I made ten bucks. Uh, Forty four ninety nine. Oh, the Corningware was eight oh nine plus shipping. The Gremlins NECA figure forty four ninety nine plus shipping. Next up, so one of these last weeks, this is the second one. Um, it's a vintage Tupperware celery container. And that is $6.29 plus shipping. After that, it's a Panasonic KX TG something something blah blah blah. Um, it's a it's a phone with two extenders. Let me see if I can find that. Panasonic. Move a couple things. Move a couple things. Make a big mess. Please don't make a big mess. There we go. You can't see it. It's in a box. I'll show you. It's a phone. Panasonic. It's a Panasonic. Uh, I think it might be an answering machine too, but it's it's one base unit and then two extenders after that a uh, bucky o'hare bruiser figure right there um the phones that was 30 59 plus shipping that's why many videos ago at this point i went through and i had been just piling phones up like i would list them if they were new in box or at least like in the box or easier to list but i just had been stockpiling random ones i've gotten at sales and and goodwill and stuff like that and then i went through all of them and listed all of them or trashed them or whatever 
and I won't ever do that again, of course, but I still will keep my eye out because, like I said, thirty fifty nine for a used phone that you're probably at a garage sale going to get for a buck or two. Um, and then, like I said, Bucky O'Hare Bruiser, nine forty nine, free shipping for that guy. No accessories, a little beat up. And then these are always good. Vintage uh, Tupperware Tumbler. I listed a few, so let me double check where that's at. That's B3, so B3, tucked back in the corner here. I find that if I'm listing, because I listed, I think, three sets of tumblers, um, put them on different shelves. Put them, however you organize your stuff, if you list something that's very similar, spread them out a little bit so that you reduce your chance of making a mistake. And got uh, $10.99 plus shipping there. After that, this is in the old system. I know exactly where it is, but it's Looney Tunes salt and pepper shaker. You can't see it. I'm not going to unwrap it, but you'll see the picture on the screen. It's a Bugs Bunny and a Taz salt and pepper shaker. They're vintage, but that was mass produced, so not super valuable, but it was something I had from many, many years ago. So no, no cost of goods there. $10 plus shipping. I took an offer on that. Next thing up, again in the old system, is a vintage set of four Pyrex milk glass. Um, if I see something that says Pyrex, I buy it. I mean, if the price is okay, like it, you know, some people they, you know, they, they think they have something and they overprice it. Ooh, I'm about to drop one. But yeah, white, plain, Pyrex. Oh God, if you hear a crashing sound, that's one breaking. That was a terrible way to carry it shoved it under my elbow and barely hanging on but a set of four of those uh 9.89 plus shipping that's got to go in that's eh, going to the tip of florida i was gonna say that's pretty pricey for shipping and then last thing up i've sold these twice and not got paid for them twice and so this time somebody actually paid for them it is a set of five i think these are the right ones tupperware lids um, I'll double check on that. But yeah, set of five. These are uh, two number 215, all Tupperware. That's a, one of the great things about Tupperware, has a number. Every single piece of Tupperware, that, uh, this one, the lid and the base, they all have a number. Makes thing, makes listing, looking up. If you have a lid and it's not connected to the piece, you can easily find out what it is and what it goes to. $17.99 free shipping for those lids. And the other two times I had sold it, I took offers. That time I did not take an offer. They just paid the price. But yeah, Tupperware lids, Tupperware in general is okay. Tupperware lids, lids are great because shipping is so cheap, so easy. Like this thing, six something plus shipping because shipping is going to be, you know, $8 or whatever because it's, it's, too too heavy to, to go first class um but this 17 dollars free shipping and this will just get shoved in an envelope can't even hurt them nothing you could do to those you could drop a brick on them that ain't gonna hurt those so yeah tupperware lids i'm, I'm on a mission this this summer for tupperware lids I'll, I'll be like no i don't want the base i just want the lids just give me the lids give me all the lids no don't don't stockpile things that's that's a problem i've had so my plan for this week, because that's that's all the the sales for today, you know, it's okay, not not great, not bad, but I I've been do I was doing a deep dive on my store, trying to figure out, you know, it it's a couple of sales day in, days in a row where where like the number of sales is fine, but the the total dollar is a little low. So I was trying to you know tinker with that a little bit, which if you don't know, you should tinker with your eBay store often. And I don't mean like mess stuff up. I mean, go into listings, change a couple words, stuff like that, because it's all done with an algorithm and eBay sees that you are doing stuff and pushes your listings up further and, and puts them out front a little bit. So what I did is I went through, and this one I was just testing, because I don't know if, this, if custom SKUs, your custom SKU number, affects that. So I went through everything that's in the old system, uh, which is a non-system. You'll, you'll hear me say it's in the old inventory system. 
that means it's it's not an inventory system it's just stuck on on these two shelves over here that's the old inventory system is it's on a shelf um so what i went through is i i went through all of those and i changed the custom SKU on those to ois old inventory system and i just want to see if that affected it that was a pain because lots of things you can bulk edit like select all of your listings and change something custom SKUs you can't do that so I had to go through uh, 180 listings individually click on it type in uh, OIS save click you know that was not fun but we'll see if that doesn't work I'll never do that again because that if that does work that's a really easy one where I don't actually have to change the listing I could just go in and change change one letter or add a add a hyphen or something like that where I'm actually not having to think about it. It's just mindless, ba 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 ba, and then sales go up. Do I think that's going to work? No. Uh, <laughs> but I wanted to test it out. And then the other thing, because I said this last video, I think, or a couple videos ago, my average cost per, my average uh, sale price per item is i want to say it was 27 i, I double checked over the weekend but i want to say it was around 27 dollars. so you know if you got nine sales average of 27 dollars, that should be a good sale but the last three sales days i've had numbers wise good but price wise was weird and i think what's happening is that uh i'm low on electronics so like vcrs head unit stuff this shelf here this one here my yep that one there and then this one over here in the corner they all all three used to be full constantly i it was something i sourced a lot of and i'd always have extras that i just hadn't tested yet and then you know ones that i have tested that either i need to do something to or get rid of um that's a project i don't want to do i might actually i might put those out on the porch and say free because the amount of time it's going to take to to try to fix these i don't think is going to be worth my time and if somebody takes them so i don't have to throw them away that's also a save my time so i think that might be my my option there maybe the the dvd vcr players because i think it was like one side worked and the other side didn't i might still just list them and just say like the, this side doesn't work or this side does um but i have i want to i think it was like nine different electronic type things receivers vcrs cd players dvd players whatever out in my storage unit so i'm gonna get all those and get these shelves filled up again because it's those you know 50 to 100 dollar listings that need to get peppered in every other day that really bumps up your average sale price which again my price per item average is is a lot higher than than my last few sale days so it's just something that's a little weird i think that's the only thing i can do is is try to really increase the number of high-end pieces I have and also I have you know so maybe it's not 27 I just thought of that I have a set of Louis L'Amour leather bound books listed and it's I think it's listed for like $1,500 so that might be skewing it a little bit actually that's skewing it a lot of it uh so my average cost might be a little closer to 23 somewhere in that range that's that's one of the things you got to do you always got to be seeing what you can do don't just sit on your butt like if something's not working right look into it try to figure it out watch other videos from other sellers and see what they do to increase their sales or change their store around or or help their um workflow you know just you know be on top of your birth of your business um because after this week i should have everything on hand listed except for records because i still need to i'm waiting on record mailers because i'm not going to box up every one i need specific ones i have a few hundred to list so it makes sense to get a few hundred record uh mailers so that that streamlines that process but that'll probably be about a week of listing right there just listing those records maybe i should try to find a record player because i can't test them that's for sure before i go for the day though uh something i found it humorous i don't know if anybody else would find it humorous i know they didn't find it humorous i had purchased as if you've been watching my videos, you know I'm kind of into card collecting a little bit. Got these here, got these here. Pointing is hard, um, and I've been I've gotten a few hits, so it's it's going good. I'm having fun doing it. And I got some stuff listed too to try to counter my own hobby. You know, if your hobby can pay for itself, that's pretty cool. But what I do when I'm buying raw cards, I'm just trying to get them cheap. If I can't get it for you know less than five bucks, I'm not 
I'm not doing it because it's too risky. Go, co comes in the mail and it's got a dented corner and I've wasted $5. But if I spend a dollar and whatever. And lots of times if you just watch auctions, you can just snipe them at the last minute. Nobody bid on it, that kind of thing. And that's what happened. I got three Jordan cards from somebody in Canada and Canada? No, I got the ones from Canada. This was somebody in Florida. And they, I got it for 99 cents free shipping for three cards because nobody bid on them. I don't know, maybe the listing was bad or they just snuck through the cracks or whatever, for whatever reason, the timing was bad. Lots of times whenever you end your auction can really affect how well it does. You know, you don't want them to end at four in the morning because then nobody's doing the last minute bids and bidding it up a bunch, but they canceled the order, which, yeah, if something happens, like you go to ship it and you're like, oh, poop, I broke it, or it got damaged, or something happens, that's perfectly acceptable, that happens. But what happened in this scenario is they canceled my order and said nothing. And I'm like, okay. So I, I wait a day, you know, I'm not in no hurry, whatever. Maybe they forgot to message me or something. And then they message me and tell me to request a refund. Uh, no, <laughs> that's not gonna happen. Because for one, when you cancel an order, I'm pretty sure it just refunds. I'm not positive on that, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it just automatically refunds your money. And so I go into their, their store just to see you know, maybe they have 100% positive feedback and this was just a weird thing or they had an off day or whatever. And I go and they've got like 30 feedback and like five to 10 negative, like a lot of negative feedback. Like they're, they're clearly a bad seller. And you go, Drew, like who cares? It's not your store, you know, whatever. You got your money back. I care because it makes me look bad. It makes the community of eBay sellers look bad be the same thing as any other business you know if you're a if you're a tattoo artist and the pe the people that are you know doing those like side jobs out of their basement giving people sepsis sepsis septis septis i think it's septis i'm not a doctor um that makes you look bad or you know the the used car salesman you know that like slimy stuff there are used car salesmen that are not slime bags or you know bad people but certain people will give a profession a bad image and anything that does that to my profession, I find personally offensive. So I went in and I I gave him a negative feedback. And I I try, cause when you look at people's feedback, you only get to see a few words unless you like open and stuff. So I wanted to make sure in the beginning of it, uh, I let people know, like when you look at this person, like canceled order because, you know, the bid was bad. Like, I don't remember exactly what I said, but something about they canceled my order because they didn't want to give it to me for the price that I had paid for it. Like exchanged money, gave them my money for the thing. That's how this works. You sell a thing, I give you money. It's an exchange of goods for currency. That's how selling things works. If you take a loss, that's on you. Tough, deal with it, tax write off, you know? Now this could be a 15 year old kid, whatever, but I still wanna warn the buyer, don't mess with this person. They're not a good seller. And then, like I said, there was a bunch of other ones. I was not the only one. I was not just picking on this person. But this is the funny part. They were so mad that I left them negative feedback that they left me positive feedback just so that they could say something nasty. So thank you for the positive feedback because nobody looks at a positive feedback and reads it. Nobody's like, oh, he's got 100% positive feedback. Let me read through 10 of these and see if one of them's a nasty comment. No, all they see is I have 100% positive feedback. So thank you, terrible seller, for giving me a thumbs up on the on the old eBay. Um, let me see, what did, they, what did they say specifically? I don't wanna, I'm not gonna put their store out there. I'm not gonna put them on blast like that. Like, like it is what it is. You could, I should have looked. I should have looked, said they saw they had like 50% positive feedback and just not done it. Where we got, where we got, where we got? Uh, da, da, da. Oh, here we go. It's, it's a good one. Buyer is a thief on eBay. Me, calling the buyer who paid for the good a thief. Buyer is a thief on eBay. Refund this, comma, refund this poor sap. Look at the pick, LOL. Okay, if you put LOL in a nasty thing, like you're you're just you're a child. That's why I'm I'm assuming this might be a kid. 
so it's just it's funny to me and again positive feedback so thank you thank you for that um but i don't i i'm i'm very confused uh look at the pick i don't know what that means i'm confused by that like refund this poor sap look at the pick so they clearly don't know, even know how this works because i got my money back i think i'll have to double check on that but usually cancel an order refund just happens uh but look at the pick i'm I don't know what that means. Like maybe they were looking at the only thing I talked about showed to my girlfriend and she's like, do they mean like your eBay store picks? Like they were hating on your pictures. And I'm like, I don't know, maybe I got some from, you know, over a year ago when I was in a dark garage with, with like a clamp light. And I was using uh tissue paper on my workbench before I, you know, even though my garage is a bit of a, you know, shambled mess as you see like this is a colossal improvement from what i used to work with this was like a legitimate garage with you know oily counters and no heat and i'd be out here in a parka and a hat and gloves yeah so i i wanted to start a youtube a year ago but i was like i can't film i can barely breathe so <laughs> it wasn't an option which is really funny i don't i don't know it it made me laugh i'm like i i get my money back I get a positive feedback out of it. I I look back at the pictures of the cards. They weren't worth the, the dollar I was going to pay for them anyways. I just hadn't looked at it very good. I just saw, oh, a dollar. Psh, snipe that one. Um, but it would have been a waste of a dollar anyway. So it worked out good for me. That's going to be all for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs down. Leave some questions or comments in the comments. I haven't had a viewer question in a while. I don't have all the knowledge, but I do have some. So if you have something you're curious about, about myself, my business, eBay, reselling, all of it. Just go ahead and ask. Subscribe, share, and be good to each other.